Diopters are probably one of the best yet overlooked tools in the modern cinematographer's kit. Two of the main reasons for the overlook are lack of awareness and lack of good options. So when Simmod Lens addressed the lack of good options with their new diopter sets, I decided to address the lack of awareness. Diopters are particularly popular among anamorphic enthusiasts. The reason for that is that anamorphics mostly suck at close focus. Suck can either be defined by poor performance or minimum focus that's not close at all, with men's distances much greater than their spherical counterparts, or even a less squeeze factor at close focus. That's when diopters come into the mix. Diopters are known as a close-up or macro filter. And before you think to mention extension tubes, I'll stop you. Even though the results are somewhat relatable, the principles behind each one are totally different, especially for anamorphics. I just called them filters a second ago, so that hints where they go, and that is in front of a lens. But diopters aren't filters. They are actually auxiliary lenses that shorten your infinity focus. For example, we have a lens here set to infinity, and by dropping a plus one diopter in front of it, we are now focused at three feet, or one meter, and that's all a good diopter should do. Bad diopters won't be so kind, and you'll be able to easily spot aberrations towards the edges. This gets more pronounced as you pick stronger values like a plus four or a plus ten. Your focus range gets shorter and shorter, but your image also gets messed up. One thing that diopters don't really love is wide-angle lenses. Wide angles reveal the imperfections of even good diopters, and here's what I mean by that. Look at this shot with a 28mm focused at the screen, which is just short of 50 centimeters away, or 1 foot 7. And this is what happens when I put on a plus 2 diopter and adjust focus to match. Lots of aberrations, right? So using diopters on wide-angle lenses that can do extreme close-ups is like using your reading glasses while driving. Simmod's new diopters are the good type. In fact, they're so good, there's nothing quite like them in the market, and I'll cover why while I tell you more about diopters themselves. The first topic is diopters' strengths. I mentioned what a plus one does and glossed over that a plus four and a plus ten focus even closer. But you must learn this bit of math. A diopter's furthest focus, its infinity, corresponds to the inverse of its power in meters. The inverse of a number, in case you forgot, is 1 over that number. So for 8 plus 1, we got 1 over our diopter power, 1, which means 1 divided by 1 that totals 1. Meter. Measured from the diopter. I'm sorry for my American friends, you gotta convert that to feet. So roughly multiply it by three. One meter is three feet and three inches. Cool. One more time for practice. Now with a plus two diopter. One over two equals half or 0 0.5 meters. A foot and seven inches approximately. Again, measured from the diopter and so on for plus three, plus four, etc. It's easy to find your new infinity. And there's more math to find your new minimum focus, but I won't cover that here. Instead, use the calculator in the description to figure all that. On top of that, you can stack diopters and just add their powers. So if I stack a plus one and a plus two, that behaves as if I had a plus three diopter. This is useful if you need to get even closer to your subject but your strongest diopter isn't strong enough. Looking at Simmon's diopters, we have a plus one and a plus two, for which we already cover the math, and a plus 0 0.5. How do we do that math then? Let's try it. 0 0.5 is also known as one over two, and the inverse of that is two. So, the plus 0.5 diopter focuses up to 2 meters or 6 foot 6. This is likely to be your most used diopter. I'm using one right now. But it'll take you months to create the habit and notice the differences. This limitation on infinity focus boosts bokeh for most lenses. Here's an example of a frame focused on the lens at 2 meters 
And here's the same frame with a plus 0.5 diopter matching focus. Same thing for a plus one. You get it, right? The thing is, plus half diopters are pretty rare. Most macro photography doesn't care for the focus range of a plus half, so the cheap Vivitar kits always start at plus one. They also offer plus four and plus 10 powers, which are hardly ever useful in filmmaking. These kits are made with super cheap glass, meaning you won't get great performance from them. Passable, sure, but not great. Another point where Ron's diopters excel is size. You can get them in 95mm threaded rings or in 4 by 5.65 inch trays. Most cheap kits cap at 82 and 86 millimeters, while most cine lenses are larger than that. And if you're using a matte box, putting on or taking off a standard round diopter takes a minute. But in trays, you have a much better time. The only trade off is they are beefy and take up two filter slots. Also, answering before you ask, no, you cannot take the glass out of the frames. They were designed to fit industry standard matte boxes such as RELMB or Bright Tangerine Misfit Kick. And even haphazardly fit small rigs are cane matte box, as long as you put some tape to secure it. Optically speaking, a diopter is a pretty simple design. So why are these so beefy? Actually, why is the plus two much thicker and heavier than the other two? Well, I'm glad you asked. Diopters, being so simple, are prone to introducing artifacts at higher power. So, for the plus two, Simon chose to make it an acromat, a lens made up of two elements glued together. The point of doubling the glass is that each element corrects some of the other one's flaws, so you get a strong diopter that is still super clean. You can find these diopters at Simon's website, but they ain't cheap. The 95mm ones are cheaper at $150 each for the plus half and plus one, and $190 for the plus two. The tray ones are $490 for the plus half and plus one, and $590 for the plus two Acromat. These are certainly pricey compared to the Vivitar $30 set, but in essence, they are different tools. These cover a much wider array of lenses, deliver superior performance, and facilitate your workflow. At that price point, you'll also get great pouches for safe transport as well as tags for your Mac box. So to recap, diopters will change your lens's focus range, limiting you to shorter distances and many times improving original minimum focus. The big drawback is you won't be able to reach infinity with a diopter attached. Diopters are essential for good inserts and meaningful extreme close-ups. They're also good for an array of other creative uses, such as split diopters to expand your focus areas and split your viewer's attention. There's even more cool things to diopters, but I'll leave them to the next video on the topic. Were you already familiar with diopters? There's something I'm always trying to use more to upgrade my visuals. And what are your thoughts on Simmon's new diopters? I'd love to read your comments below. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Chit the feathers, out.